Let's measure power factor with an oscilloscope. Now, power factor of any AC circuit is equal to the true power in watts divided by the apparent power in volt amps, which is equal to the cosine of the phase angle. Now, the phase angle is the difference in degrees by which the current leads or lags the voltage. So over here we have a couple sine waves here. The first one here is voltage and then current. So in this case, the, the voltage is leading the current. So that's an inductive load. And remember our Eli the Iceman, so L is for inductance, so the, the voltage is leading the, the current here. And for capacitance, the, the current is going to lead the, the voltage. Now, at one cycle here, 360 degrees, and at 60 hertz, it's going to take 0 0.0166 seconds to, to do that. This is your timeline here. And for 50 hertz, it's going to be 0 0.2, uh, 0.02 seconds, okay? So, we want to find the, uh, the difference in time between these two, uh, two sine waves. So, we, we take a look at the, uh, the zero crossing point there, and we can put a couple of cursors in there. And when we do that, it'll come up on the scope saying that we have uh, 0 .00207 uh, seconds in between these two. So, we want to convert this to degrees, and then take the cosine of that to find our power factor. So in order to do that, we use uh, a ratio and proportion. So we take our uh, 360 degrees over our time, which is 0 0.0166 seconds, and then we take the degrees uh, shifted, which we don't know, and we put it over the, the phase shift in seconds, which, which we do know, which is this right here. So in order to do uh, ratio and proportion, this is a formula we're going to use here, 360 over 1. 0 0.0166 and the uh, phase shift uh, degree shifted over 0 0.002075 okay now to solve for ratio of portions you just you cross multiply so if this were the uh, uh, ratio and proportion we would take a times d which is equal to x and b times n which is equal to x and then we would take uh, b divided into x and that's going to give us our our n up here, okay. So over here we do this, we do the same thing. We just take uh, 360 times our time here, and that's going to give us 0 0.747. Uh, and then we we take our um, 0 0.0611 and we divide that into the 0 0.747, uh, uh, and that's going to give us 45 degrees. We take the cosine of 45 degrees, and that's going to be a power factor of uh, 0 0.707. Okay, now if these two uh, sine waves were uh, together, looking like one sine wave, then uh, there'd be zero degrees in between them. The cosine of zero is one, so one is the, the highest power factor you can have, which is the best that's what we're looking for. And if they were 90 degrees apart, cosine of 90 is zero, so that's the worst power factor you can have. And uh, we were at 45 degrees, which was 0 0.707 uh, for a power factor. Now, this is, uh, we were measuring mains voltage here, so in order to do that, I, I made up a probe. Now, you can use a times 10 probe on the, that comes with the oscilloscope, but uh, I don't really trust that uh, probe with uh, higher voltage. And we don't want to put 120 volts or so into the, into the scope. So what I did here is I made up a, uh, a probe, times 10's probe. So what this is, there's 10 one mega ohm resistors here. And there, this is a voltage divider. So I, because I come off this last uh, last resistor here, so if I put 120 volts out here, I get 12 volts back at the scope here, and it has to go through all these uh, these resistors here, so uh, through nine mega ohms actually. So uh, the, I'm not going to have much current back there, and this is going to be safe, and uh, hopefully I won't uh, wreck my scope. Of course, the ground comes out to ground. Now. To measure the, that's going to give us our voltage sine wave. Now, to measure our current, we have to. Now, if you don't have a, uh, a current probe, now the current probes will probably cost more than my oscilloscope does. So, uh, you need to put in a uh, a, uh, a transformer, a uh, isolation transformer, okay? Because this, the probe on your on your uh, scope is grounded. One of the, the ground part of the probe is grounded, of course, 
and that's grounded to the chassis of the uh, scope and to gr to actually physical ground. Okay, and the voltage we're measuring there's a uh, a line voltage and the neutral hot and neutral here. Now the neutral is a current carrying conductor and it it is grounded at the service back at the, uh, the beginning of the service uh, coming into your building but uh, it and it does carry current but we can't put the ground you can't tie the ground to the neutral if you put your clip on there to to the uh, neutral wire what in fact what you're doing is you're making a separate path for the the uh, neutral current to travel back okay the ground current, the, the ground wire only carries fault current, and so you can't physically do it. It's uh, it's against the code to actually tie the ground to your to your neutral there. It's tied in one place at the beginning of the uh, service, so can't do that. So we're going to put in an isolation transformer, and we're going to have our own ground here, our floating ground on this. So what we're going to do here is we're going to have our load across here, and we're going to take our voltage between this this point here and and this point here so the, your, our voltage is uh, voltage probe is going to be across there and that's going to give us our our voltage sine wave to get our current we have our load and then in series with the load we have a one ohm resistor and then our other probe is going to be across there to our floating ground there and we're going to measure the the voltage drop across that resistor and that's going to correspond to the the current flowing through that uh, that resistor here through the load so that's how we're going to get our, our voltage and current curves here and it's going to be fairly safe because we have our isolation uh, transformer in there so never tie the ground to your to your neutral wire now here's one here i did this one is um what do we have here the, this is the voltage and this is the current so this happens to be uh an inductor so because we have our voltage is leading the current here now this is the uh the uh zero crossing point here so these are my two cursor lines here and then over here you can see that it's uh, 800 uh, microseconds okay so we take our 800 microseconds times our 360 degrees and then we take our um, that gives us 0 0.288 and we divide that by uh, our 0 0.166 for our 60 cycles and it gives us 17 degrees and then we take the cosine of 17 and it gives us uh, 0.95 for our uh, power factor so that's a fairly good power factor this happens to be uh, on a uh, on just on a bell transformer so uh, with a light load on it okay and then this one here this is an LED light bulb and in this case we see that our current is leading our our voltage here so we know this capacitive these uh, uh, LEDs have a capacitor dropper in there to drop the voltage and then they have a chip in there that uh, uh, regulates the current so that's why we get these uh, this funny uh, current sine wave here now here's our crossing zero crossing points here and here and uh, we look over here and that's going to be uh, 3.4 uh, uh, milliseconds on that so we put that into our formula and it comes out to uh, 65 degrees and we take the cosine of 65 and that's going to be a power factor of, of uh, 0.41 so that's our power factor for the light bulb and for our transformer and that's uh, that's what you need to do to have uh, to measure your uh, power factor on oscilloscope of course uh, it's best to buy a, a buy a current probe to do it with but uh, I didn't have one so I'm doing it this way but uh, anyway, that's uh, power factor with the oscilloscope.